Well, my name is Meg, and um, I'm just so excited. Like, <laughs> I was saying to Ad, my husband Adam this morning, like, I'm just so excited to get here. And last night, many of you asked, are you nervous? I'm like, no, but now that you say it, maybe I should be. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not, because I know that I really actually think of it as just being able to sit and chat and have a coffee with each one of you, even if you don't like coffee. I do. So... Um, <laughs> So I just hope that this ministers to you as much as it has ministered to me in developing and just working on the teaching that is going to be today. So um, I just wanted to open up a little bit about myself. I know a lot of you, um, but maybe some of you don't know what part of my testimony is and how I got here. So I just wanted to share a little bit about that. So I've had the privilege um, of being, <laughs> which some of you might laugh at that statement, but I've had the privilege of being married to my husband, Adam, for 15 years now. We just celebrated that, and um, I'm so thrilled because he's such a godly man, and yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and with, um, we, in this, in our marriage, we have had four wonderful children, and uh, two boys and two girls in that order. And I share all this information to kind of give you a perspective of what kind of transformed through um, becoming a mother. So as I grew up, uh, I grew up going to church every week and sometimes daily, depending on, I grew up in the Catholic church. And um, sometimes my sister and I would be going to church every day, depending on what was happening. And um, I always had that foundation of I knew who God was. There was a head knowledge of who God was. But I didn't realize that I had to make a, there had to be a transition to a heart knowledge of who God was. So through um, when we had the boys, so the boys are 17 months apart. And um, when Anderson was 18 months, so Marshman with Marshall was only five weeks old, Anderson was injured. And um, as a result, he had to have surgeries for the following year. So as you can imagine, um, I had to have C-sections for all the kids. And um, I wasn't even healed from having Marshall. So now I'm having to now tend to and manage surgery, surgical situations and bandages for Anderson, which I was happy to do. But there was a huge weight on me. There was guilt um, associated for Marshall that I wasn't giving him enough time. And there was a huge weight of anger for how this, why Anderson was injured. And there was just, there's a lot of stuff that I had to resolve. And then, um, so I worked through that, but it was working through it on my own way. I worked through it in that I controlled things what I, that I could through my exercise. I love endurance sports. I love working out. I enjoy doing that. Um, and the, the boys were in the stroller a lot. And I would go everywhere uh, in, with them in the stroller. So I managed through things that way. I figured that with my, um, because I knew how to work hard, I knew that. I was well educated. Um, I was a good person that I should be able to manage what was going on in front of me. Even though I was still, I was a new mom. <laughs> I was still learning this journey and um, not really having a foundation of how I was gonna move forward. So all in this time, Adam was in hot pursuit of some mentors that he was associated with. And they were a group of Christian men. So that was different because he grew up on the baseball field. That was his Sunday mornings. That's what he did. Um, he was a devoted Turtle Club member, and uh, which there's no nothing wrong with Turtle Club. That's what they did. That's what him and his family did. So that's what he knew. So for him to now be pursuing um, this group of Christian men, that was different to me. And in that, um, sorry, I have to readjust my uh, new stage in life is getting bifocals. They call them transitions, but there's no transition about it. There's, you have to like, uh, hold on one minute. Um, <laughs> um, with Adam's pursuing, he, he was changing in front of my eyes. And I was more and more frustrated because 
I was trailing behind. I was like, no, 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 we need to like refocus on my frustration here. You're not understanding where I'm coming from, and, but you're changing in front of my eyes. So it was, I was like really torn because I was excited that he wanted to learn about God, right? Yeah, I was so, so, so thankful about that, but I wasn't ready to move where he was yet. So there was a transition. And all of these things, all of these situations, similar to what Susie has already spoken about, God was preparing my heart. And that's all, that's what he's doing for you today. Whatever your circumstances is, you can insert your story, and I will promise you, God is working through that. He's weaving in his plan for you, not yours, which even though every time I'm like, wow, I, but I had a really good one. Do you want to re, like renegotiate here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> His is way better, always. So, um, so all those kind of situations that are going on, and ultimately, um, those of you that know, Adam is, is really involved in our church, and he, he came to accept Jesus as a Savior. And there's a huge transformation in him, um, which I am so, so thankful for. But then fast forward, um, then we had our girls and the girls, uh, between Marshall and McKenna, there's two and a half years, and so much happened in that. So much, so much happened, as my sister's nodding her head. <laughs> we had to agree sometimes not to talk about certain things. So um, on our runs or whatever, it was, we, we weren't allowed, I wasn't allowed to say anything about what was going on. It was my frustration because it needed, I needed to stop for that moment and just um, do other things than talking about that. And that's gonna, I'm going to reference that again, so keep that as your point. So when we had the girls, um, both separately, the girls are 15 months apart, and in those times, um, we were told at like nine weeks, I was nine weeks pregnant, and my doctor called me at home, which never feels like a good idea. And I'm like, wow, I feel so special, Dr. JC. Why are you calling? <laughs> and um, so we were told that there was going to be something wrong with McKenna, that she was going to have in the world's eyes, there was gonna be something wrong with her. And that made for a really long pregnancy. I wasn't able to enjoy, I, I missed out on joy because I, I wasn't content where I was. I was. I was lost in the frustration and I was continuing to feed those feelings, right? And Adam, even though I didn't want to, I, um, cause I, as a side note, my control issue was that I never left the kids. I didn't leave them. Like, Marshall never knew me without him. He never knew it. And um, which, it, that was my con comfort. So, uh, which was okay, but it wasn't, it wasn't fruit giving, right? And uh, all these examples I share with you to be transparent, to say, I'm sure you can relate in some way to these things. In some way, you might be able to say, okay, it might not have been exactly what Meg said, but I get what she was getting at, right? So uh, Adam just said this, enough is enough. You, you are blind to see what God's trying to do here for you. You're just, you're ignoring that he has been with you this whole time, that he has provided for us, that he has, in that time, <laughs> Adam had lost his job and he was working at the jewelry store. That was our only source of income. And we had no money. And we had our car died. We were down to one car, hence me pushing the kids everywhere. And because I wanted to get out. Like, <laughs> there was no way I was not going to get out. That wasn't going to be an obstacle. And um, I, there were so many things that said, like, are, do, you have, do I have your attention yet? And is God saying that to you? Today, do I have your attention yet? Because I want your attention to be on me, not on yourself. So he got my attention, and um, and it did take working through my children. I thought I didn't I didn't really have relationships. I'm not bragging, but it's true. So I just want to explain that to you. But um, <laughs> um, relationships were easy for me. I I it's oh it's a room full of different people, great, I'm going to go and meet everybody. I know that would be great for me. Um, relationships, that's not a problem. But when it came to my children and my, there was something going on for my children, no, you've crossed the line and you will not proceed, right? So um, my attention was grabbed. 
Adam explained to me, and it's a verse that has come up many times, Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Not a result of how much I could do on my own. Not a result of what I thought, you know, um, me keeping everybody close and not allowing anybody in, that I didn't want that vulnerability because then what if, what if Anderson got hurt again? That Then that would be back on me. It would be my to deal with. So that really broke down a lot of walls for me. So I encourage you to um, look through, use the Bible in that way too, that you can use it as a tool to look up. And I know I love using my Bible app. I have the YouVersion app. And you can search in it, whether, like, if there's something that you're dealing with, you can search on that subject, and it will bring up Bible verses um, to you. So I do encourage you to use the actual paper version, but as a quick, you know, technology is good for some things, and that's one thing that it is really good for. So I say all of that to preface why I can even speak on this subject today, um, and to be able to have an authority to say, I know God can do the same for you. If he's, I'm, I know, I think that I'm special. Um, we're all special, but, right? You all, you all, everybody thinks you're special um, in your own way, but um, I'm not so special that it's only for me. So I want you to know that. I want you to know that God is nudging you. If you feel that, um, the Holy Spirit will come and figure out a way to get your attention, and you just need to pay attention. So... That's important. So have you ever found yourself saying, how did I get here? Like how, some days I, I never thought we'd actually get here. So, because um, <laughs> I was like, oh, we're going to, we're going to, it's on, it's off, it's on. Oh, um, so I've been practicing this for a while. Um, as I'll, just to give you a visual, I did practice with my girls karaoke machine. So we had a little bit way too much fun with that. And when the girls thought I was taking a little too long in, in my explanation, somebody would inevitably get the other microphone and um, read what I was doing with some, like, what, who, I'm not even dancing. Like, who are you, who are you mimicking? Uh, <laughs> but they had, we had way too much fun with it. So anyways, um, so we, I'm, to bring you back to how did we get here, I think it's fun to think, okay, there's a reason why you're here today. I hope, um, I hope, and my prayer is, is that your, your heart is open to what this conference, this worship weekend is for you, and there's, there's something for everyone, and I don't know each of your stories. I'd love to be able to sit and find them out, but um, I'm kind of nosy like Sherry is. We're, we're good friends, um, so, <laughs> but I, I trust that God has, he has a plan. He's unfolding your plan your story of how he is going to be glorified through you. And so I just encourage you today, whether you're a new mom, or I know there's a new mom here, I'm not sure if this is your first baby, um, but or you're an expectant mom, or you're a mom of toddlers. I know Julianne has a young crew under her, and um, or you're a mom of teenagers. I just entered this situation, and it's new. It's something. Um, it, Anderson is now bigger than me, which he loves to lord over me, um, which is good. But I keep reminding him, I'm like, that's fine. But I am always your mother. And you'll never forget that because I won't not tell you. Um, <laughs> um, so, you, you know, everybody's coming in from different perspectives. You might be a grandma here today or an auntie. But your role in that motherhood or mentor is important. You might be, I know I see Kate sitting there. I know she's not a mom yet, um, but she is a mother figure to my children. And you never know what your role and the importance of, the, of you and your womanhood is for these children. You don't know. So God has put you there for a purpose. And even today and last night, talking about, you know, finding out and kind of seeking out what God has in store for you, as a mother, you've already, you've kind of un, 
uh, overturned one of those pieces, right, of finding out what God's wanting for you because he put you in motherhood. And so my central um, point today is that motherhood is a ministry. It is our ministry. And um, it's really great. It is a gift that we get to be on mission to help disciple our children in these um, growing up years. So it's really, really important. In 3 John 1, 4, we read, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. That brings me such, such like peace to be able to say, like, yeah, my children, my children know the Lord and they are excited. Um, I'm sure if some of you have seen, if you belong to this church, if you've seen my children, they are so excited to get here. And um, <laughs> Marshall is just thrilled. He can't wait till he's old enough to be able to serve. So I warn you now, because he's just so excited to be able to greet everybody with a smile. And I keep thinking, I'm like, okay, well, I, I guess he totally heard my message. He got the memo. Because I always say to them, you never know. Like, obviously, I want you to go to church because it's important for you to go and to grow in your understanding. Um, but you don't know who needs to see you. You don't know. And maybe somebody is looking for you today and is saying, oh, I wonder where Jen is. I want to just go talk to her. You know, because you want to you want to share something with them, or um, you know, be able to that common those relationships matter. So you matter. You matter to show up. So I encourage you to do that. So my favorite verse, um, just with the kids growing up, this has been such an adventure um, in all seasons. And my favorite verse reminds me. Even on, on the moments, um, I know I, I am bright and cheery. It, it, Adam says, he's like, well, you are always bright and cheery. There's, there's moments when I'm not, but I generally am. I really, I am thankful for um, everything. I'm just so excited. I'm excited about life. So, um, but there are moments where I have to be reminded. Uh, my favorite verse of jo Joshua 1.9, I have... I was so thankful. I'm like, oh, well, thank you, Hobby Lobby, for putting this on a board. Um, <laughs> it says, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Um, and I so, I love seeing that verse and being reminded that, you know, in the moment I might be by myself, but I'm never alone. I'm never alone. So, and that's okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to propose is that our ministry as mothers, is actually a horizontal reflection. I'm not signing for you, Kim, but um, is a horizontal reflection of our vertical relationship with God. I'm going to say that again. Our ministry as mothers is actually a horizontal reflection of our vertical relationship with God. I know I've been able to work through this thought, but I really want, I want to sit on that for a minute, and we're going to pray about it. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, help us this afternoon to discover what you need us as mothers to learn. We want to honor you in our ministry of motherhood and know that ultimately you are asking us to be obedient to you. We pray this afternoon that if anyone is struggling today, Lord, that they feel comforted to know the love and support you have for them. We pray that we feel encouraged to live out our life, to glorify you in our thoughts, in our actions, and to be bold to speak truth to our children and to show grace when needed. In Jesus' name, I am so thankful. So the first point that I'm going to make is that messages we feed into our thoughts will either help or hinder us as mothers. And I know Susie touched on this earlier, that the messages that are coming in, um, what we choose to um, put input into our mind will overflow. And uh, it, it is important that we are purposeful in what we are choosing to listen to, to give life to in our minds. So, you know, if you're thinking, I, 
I don't know, if you're thinking something negative, if you keep giving life to that negative thought, it will grow to as big as you want it to be. And sometimes that's just a huge waste of time. But until somebody else can like step out and go, what are you doing? I don't understand why you're wasting your time on that um, and give you a different perspective, there could potentially be a lot of time wasted on that. In 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. To obey. So it is important. We are, we are, we are told that we need to keep our thoughts captive in order to obey. Because if you don't, that you have the option of straying, right? There, that's what the outcome will be. My second point is that self-focused mothering detours from stewarding our children. In Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Train up a child in the way that he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So are we showing our children that they need, are, they, are we showing them that they need to please us? Or that we're helping them develop a heart for pleasing God and honoring him in what he's wanting them to do? And number three is God's promises. God promises that he loves the world and that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Our children need to learn this good news. The gospel means good news. We need to share that with them. So I'm going to focus, or uh, I'm going to get you to open up your little pamphlet or handout. And as you open up the front, you're going to see messages, stewarding our children, and God's promises. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to unpack them a little bit further. So if we're looking through the world's lenses, um, and we see, like, whether it's on Facebook or whatever, name, name something. That's really the one thing that comes to mind. But um, we see that maybe other moms have it all together. And um, I don't know how people do these, like, amazing pictures because mine never turn out like that. Um, there's a Photoshop. Yeah, I don't even know. I'm like, I don't have time for that. Um, <laughs> um, but in these messages that we, it might not even be true that these people have it all together. But we see the image, and then our mind goes to the point of, oh, well, that must be true. And then we convince ourselves, and we make these silly stories that has nothing to do, actually, with that person. But those messages that we're feeding in, it's not producing. It might, it might be in the temporary, giving you a, oh, okay, well, I, I know exactly what, that, what they're meaning by that picture. And it might have nothing to do with that, right? So those messages are important. We need to go um, and let go of the critical thinking of ourselves and look to God for our guidance and direction. We need to replace these mes messages or thoughts with God's authority in our life. I love like orderly, organized situations. I love that. And this, what, what I had to realize was, but God has done that for me right? I know the, I'm sure you've heard the joke, you know, being a mom, there's no handbook, but there is, there actually is. It's, it's right here. We, ha we have it in front of us and it's so clearly written out of what our, what God's expectations are through our motherhood. So that's important. So what I'm going to do, um, I know you have this, I'm going to make you toggle back and forth. I'm going to give you a little job to do. So, uh, I've given you a, um, bookmark. So right where you are, if you have a Bible with you, if you have a Bible app, I encourage you to open that. On the uh, bookmark, I have um, put a variety of different verses related to motherhood. So I wanted to just give you a few minutes to pick out one of those verses or pick one that you would like to do and just take the time to either sit and pray um, but I, I want you to just be at peace at the moment and make purposely make a connection where you're at in your seat and talk to God right now.
Okay, ladies, I hope you're encouraged by, I wanted to be purposeful about giving you a few minutes to be able to just sit and read. Sometimes it, it, in our days, um, I know when the kids were younger, I, I didn't have, at least I felt, I didn't have a lot of time um, to be able to sit and read in my Bible, but I started out slowly. I put, I still have the reminder on my phone, um, which makes me like, I just, it puts a smile on my face because I don't need the reminder anymore, but it is good to remind myself where I've come from and the journey that God has brought me on. So I do take the time to be able to read in my Bible and to just quiet myself, see, I kind of, you know, talk to God and just say, okay, what, what are you wanting me to do today, Lord? I'm here. I've definitely showed up, and I hope you have too, to be able to say, what, what do you need me to do today? How am I going to live out your good news in front of, for my children today, or with whomever I meet? I'm just so excited. I'm like, <laughs> so those messages that are coming in, I just like to start my day with, with the right message that God is leading me through my day and to be reminded me of, reminding me of that. I take time, um, I know my sister and I, we were laughing about this last night. I take time in different areas just as an application. Um, we don't have a dishwasher, which sounds like it would be like mean that we don't have a dishwasher. But uh, with six of us, we've come up with a better plan over the years now that the kids are bigger. But I take that time. I, I so enjoy washing dishes because I take the time to be able to pray and, and be thankful that we have the food, that we've had food on these plates. It sounds so corny, but I'm so thankful for those simple things. I am content in those simple things. So that might be one way that, or whether you're I am really, I know, you guys are probably going to be like, wow, you're weird. Um, I enjoy folding laundry because I take time for each one. And I'm thankful that somebody's in, like, using these clothes. And, that, and I pray that they are going to be going and honoring God while they're wearing them, which is good. So those are two ap little applications that you can use. Mess the messages that we put in, I, I can't emphasize this, emphasize this enough, the messages that we put in, that we give life to, matter. And that example matters to our children because they're always watching, aren't they? They're always going, oh, they might not realize it um, or be conscious of it, but they are watching you. Not in a creepy way, but um, <laughs> they are watching you because you are the, you are the primary source of how they are kind of molding. And God, there's a purpose there. God has put you for that purpose. So that's really great. So the messages, um, I'm going to tie it into how are you connecting in order to help those messages and how they're coming into, into you and through you. So are you involved in a small group? Susie touched on this um, earlier too. There's opportunity for you to get involved in the women's on the Wednesdays, the unveiled um, opportunities there. And if you can't make that, then maybe you can make something um, at a home group. Those are, um, it, it's different than a small group, like for um, life groups where your families are involved. It's different, as we know, getting together as women and making those connections. So I encourage you, those are opportunities, and maybe that's something that you can fit into your life. Do you carve out time to read the Bible, whether it doesn't have to be um, in the morning? It doesn't have to be. There's not a set time. God doesn't say, oh, well, you missed the eight to nine slot, so you're out. Like, that's not what he's saying. He wants you to just make time to be able to sit and um, commune with him. He wants you to settle your time because it, it's actually his. <laughs> so it's your time giving back to him. So do you have time to do that daily? Do you have, um, there's also, as Susie had mentioned, the mentoring. Maybe you need to get mentored if you're a new Christian. Maybe that's something that you might want to consider doing. I highly recommend it. Um, it's something that uh, I remember going and seeing Susie and saying, I'm not sure. Like, I know we're in a small group, um, but there's something I need. I can't see past the diapers right now. And it's not, not that that's all that I was being mentored on. But 
I couldn't see past when my mentor challenged me, do you pray for your future uh, in-laws? I'm like, what? I'm re no, re remember I was worried about the diaper situation. What do you mean you want me to pray for my future in-laws? Um, but I thought, you're right. I do need to be praying about this. So those, those are mentors help you with a different perspective than you have today and are able to help draw you out and um, develop those um, give different perspective. The neat thing is, is that through our relationships with uh, each other, we are, we are being equipped. Whether you recognize it or not, you are being equipped. I was teaching at the beginning of the year. Um, I was in here, and I was teaching the Sunday school lesson, and uh, I had to chuckle. When you hear what the story is, you're going to hopefully chuckle too, but... The Sunday school teaching was on King Josiah and the prophet Jeremiah. Now, if you don't know the story, King Josiah was only eight years old when he became king. So I want you to think about your local eight-year-old and consider if you would want that person to be king <laughs> over our area. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of like there's no way. I have a almost eight-year-old. She would actually probably do a really good job. But uh, <laughs> um, I would, I, mm, there'd still be a few like, well, that's one way to do it. Um, you know, it's still, it's still there. It's pretty funny. So anyways, but my point is, is that God equipped even an eight-year-old to carry out what he needed to do. And it was a great reminder because I thought, I said to the kids, I'm like, isn't that great? Like God's saying, even right now where you're at, please be encouraged because God is calling you to do his ministry. You are equipped. You don't have to become, you don't have to wait till you're a teenager or till you're an adult at 18. You don't have to wait for that. You get to put, you have that opportunity to show God's love right now. You get to do that. And he will equip you, equip you to do that. So have you ever thought of who your favorite example in the Bible was? I was laughing when um, the Mary and Martha story was brought up um, because I'm like, well, that was my first. Did, I know Susie heard me, but she'd taken my notes. Um, the Mary and Martha story we find in Luke 10, 38 is Mary chose to sit to listen to Jesus teaching while Mary was too, or Martha was too concerned about having her house neat and clean and was distracted with much serving. So I was thinking, I'm like, that's actually kind of funny. Like, who do we reference as our example in motherhood? And are we a being a Mary or are we being a Martha? Another example um, we find in the first book of the Bible in Genesis, where Eve is being, um, has, she is there to be a helpmate for her husband. And she gets to be. She gets to be a help. So we were designed to serve as our mission. We are designed, as I always say to the children, I love, I love serving you, but I am not your servant. <laughs> right? Like, sorry to break the news. I tried to say it in a nice way, um, but we'll deal with you later. Right? I, mean, I, I, I love serving them, but as soon as it turns into, mom, do this for me, because I said so, we, we, got, we need a little attitude adjustment. So there's a, there's a difference in that perspective. The all too obvious Mary, um, Mary the mother of Jesus, she might be your example. She is such a wonderful example. I am so humbled by Mary. I don't know how you couldn't be. Um, but in Luke 1, we read, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble estate of his servant, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. We know that as a teenager, a teenager, Mary was asked to be the mother. Mm, mm, like, come on. Like, the, I'm sure she's like, me? Why, why me? I don't, I don't understand. But do you know what her answer was? She said, yes, Lord, it's your will for my life. She submitted without complaint, without, I mean, I'm sure she had like concern, but she didn't complain about it, right? And then in, in those times, she would have faced major roadblocks because she wasn't married yet. She wasn't, right? She didn't have 
the ducks in the order, as, as everybody would have. So she would have faced huge persecution, yet she submitted anyways. Is that an example that you're using in your motherhood? We can teach our children, um, we get to, and I'm being purposeful about my language there, we get to teach our children because God has put us in authority over their life. We get to teach them uh, the fruits of the Spirit and display them ourselves. So in Galatians 5.22, um, the, there are fruits of the Spirit that we are looking for, and the fruit is, okay, so it might not be a tangible piece of apple or um, pear that you might be grabbing, but you can see the, the evidence of this fruit in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, and self-control. And in getting this, I have to be honest with you ladies, in getting all of these teachings ready, I, have, um, I was reading one of my devotionals on motherhood, the joy of motherhood, thought, ooh, that's appropriate. I like that one. We'll dive into that one. And um, as I was reading it, I suddenly put it down because I didn't like what she wrote. Um, I'm like, "Mm, maybe this isn't a good idea. Because what was put in there was that maybe, I don't know if you can relate, but I, a familiar prayer when the children were younger, you might have heard me say it in a louder voice than usual. Um, Lord, please just Like, I need a monsoon of patience right now in order to, I'm not even sure if we're going to make it through this next minute, but I would really appreciate if we could have some patience. And while I was reading this devotional, um, the lady kind of brought to the surface that maybe you're not needing patience, but wait for it, (laughs) but maybe you're needing self-control. Like, well, no, that couldn't be it. Like, couldn't possibly be what the situation is. And I thought... Yeah, this is very humbling. That's exactly what I needed. I actually needed self-control for the situation instead of patience. So that was amazing. It was a good lesson. And I encourage you. It was a different perspective. And I thought, thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. And not telling me earlier when I was (laughs) vulnerable. Um, But now when my heart is actually open to hearing it. Right? So I was very, very thankful for that. I'm going to give you another little break. We don't have much, but I'm going to give you a little bit. I'm going to give you about three minutes to be specific. And in your, um, wherever mine went, in your handout, in the middle, when you open it up to the middle, it says, my prayer. So I would like you to write out a prayer of thankfulness for the season that you're in right now. It's not being marked or graded or anything, but (laughs) um, I just want you to take the time, take a few minutes, and write that out right now.
I'll let you finish up there. The next point we're going to focus on is stewarding our children. I was chatting with my girlfriend Carrie just a few weeks ago, and we were reminding each other that our focus is actually in an eternal focus for our children. Sometimes in the moments, um, whether you're dealing with frustration or whatever is going on on that day, it's, it's hard to see past that moment and look that actually what we're focused on is our eternal focus for our children. In leading our children, um, we have the opportunity to help them develop. Um, we get to shepherd them and uh, to worship, work, and walk with Christ. I know it might, everybody might have a different style or way about going um, for things with your children, but the mindset is still the same. Your delivering might be different than mine. Um, you might have a different approach. But the end result is still what our goal is on having a focused, eternal focused mindset. So we need to be more concerned about our, how our children are reflecting God's heart than our own. So redirecting, I know I have so many opportunities during, during the day to be able to speak into the kids' lives and, um, you know, kind of help make certain corrections as we go, or praise reports uh, when, when, that, when that happens too. And, but I, it's, it's in those moments, and I, am, I pray for clarity to be able to pick those out and to be able to shepherd our children. Even from last night, um, I was listening to the testimony of Rachel, and I've heard her testimony before, but it hit differently last night. Um, I was just wildly aware of how our words impact our children. And, um, and even if that's not, you know, I want to be clear with what I'm saying to my children so that they don't misunderstand it. And, it, and we talk it through until they know what I was getting at. Um, so I took the opportunity this morning before I left to be able to come and see, with, see you ladies to make sure I was clear with one of my children that I've been driving home a point because um, it's new, and, but I, I thought, okay, I, I really need to inform this child that um, you need to shower. <laughs> and um, my delivery sometimes isn't, like, it could be misunderstood. Um, I know it sounds so simple, but just please go and shower for the rest of our lives. That would be amazing if you could shower. Um, but I, in my joking, this is my sense of humor, right? I try and like joke about it and not be, you know, just kind of make, but I, me, I went to him and I was trying to be really, really clear um, that, you know, I, it's out of love that I'm telling you this. I, I just don't want you to smell. I just don't. Um, but it's not because you're, you know, you're not good enough. You're not, not it's not those things. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that with him. So in talk, before I went there, I went and talked to Ad about it. And he's like, maybe it's just your delivery. Maybe you just need to change how you're saying things. So maybe, you know, you're all about um, the timing of things. So maybe you can say to him, hey, you have about half an hour to go and change and shower and do all the things that you need to do before we go out. So why don't you take that time right now instead of focusing on you smell. So I'm like... <laughs> Well, that's a really good way to put it. I, I will use that. So, but I, I went and talked to him because I wanted to be clear that, listen, buddy, I love you. I love you so much. And I care so much about you. That's what I'm telling you. Um, and this is new for you to be experiencing this situation. If you don't have teenage boys yet, I pray for you. I pray for you. Um, <laughs> this is just new. It's new. I'm like, wow, Lord, this is actually an undercover job, isn't it? It really is. It's called motherhood. <laughs> um, but actually, it's about how you need me to rely on you every moment, right? Like, it is, it is so clear that it's God is actually revealing your heart and where you're at. It's so humbling. It's lovely. Um, so stewarding our children instead of pleasing, because it is a comfort level for me, right, that the smell in the house is nice. Um, but is, is it really that I'm trying to say, okay, but I need you to take care of yourself, because that's what I'm asking you to do. Like, that just, that's important, right? So helping them learn those things. It's a silly application, but it, it's, it's important. So, so in your, I have in your worksheet, 
I am mindful of the time. Um, in your worksheet, there's some questions on the side, on the left-hand side in that pretty little box. I want you to think over those. And it's a tool. Um, I got the, those questions from, um, I don't know what else she does. But anyways, this lady, Arlene Pelican, she wrote a book called Parents Rising. And it's a, it's a great book. She was um, highlighted in... Focus on the family, if you're familiar with that. She, had a, uh, she was interviewed on that, and she, she's really, really good. And really, really emphasizing the importance of parents needing to rise and stand up for the truth that God is, is and the authority that we have for our children to be able to speak into their lives and not just being okay with well, it's okay, they're just going to spend time on the TV or doing their video games because that, that makes them happy. No, it may, maybe that isn't what they need to be doing right now. Maybe they need to be doing something else. That's just one example. But um, she encourages in different ways, and those are some, I just thought they were really good questions to kind of go over. Maybe you can relate to some of them, and maybe you're not even in that stage right now. Um, but they're important uh, applications to be able to think about are we are we making time am I showing similar to what Susie was saying am I just saying that we're too busy to have dinner together or are we making the time to purposely sit down and have meals together there's so much fun that can be shared there so I encourage you to go over those and the last point that I wanted to talk about is God's promises in the Bible it teaches us authority truth and encouragement in motherhood and you're not I know it's going to come as a shocker, but um, the rest of the world will not give you those. They're not giving you that advice. They're saying you're not good enough if you don't have it all together, if you don't have, you know, your hair perfect and uh, whatever, your outfit, you know, lovely, even though I did change multiple times for you ladies. Um, I had to make a few decisions, but I'm like, you'll appreciate it. I know you will. Um, so, but that, that's not a bad thing. But it is when that's, you're idolizing those things in your life, right? So God promises in our motherhood, the promises that he's showing us is life-giving. So if you're saying to me, if, if in conversation all you're saying to me is I'm too tired, I can't do all the things you're wanting me to do, well, something needs to change. Something needs to change because that's not the way God designed us as mothers to have to be able to thrive in motherhood, not just survive. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that because that God doesn't want to hear that. Not just because it's doesn't it doesn't sound nice. It just that's not what he's wanting to hear from you. He's wanting to say he's wanting to hear thank you Lord for giving me this opportunity to live out your purpose for me. He wants that for you and that's where we find the authority and the truth and the encouragement. So when you're feeling down, that's why I wanted to put out those bookmarks for you. Be encouraged in your motherhood. Seek out the information where it's coming from the, and where God is wanting you to seek it from. God's voice will still us, will lead us, will reassure us. It enlightens us, encourages comforts and calms us and best of all it converts us because naturally we are sinners naturally we will bend to the comforts of ourself and that's not what we're being called to do what God is asking of you as a mother is not what the world will lift up the world will say you know rush you and push you and frighten and confuse you but God wants you to look to him for those encouraging words for comfort I like reading through, um, it's so like nicely organized, um, Proverbs with its wisdom. I read through each one each day. I don't have to remember which one I'm on because I just think of the day on the calendar and go to that number. Um, so that's nicely organized. But I, I like looking in, and every single time, I'm always amazed. I'm like, wow, I'm pretty sure I read this last month, right? Um, but I read something new, right? It's new for that day and gives, gives me perspective for that day. So as mothers, like I said earlier, our mission is to have an eternal focus for our children. God has called you, called you. He's called you into this ministry, not for somebody else's children, but the children that he's given you. And there's, that's not a mistake. I say that to my kids. God doesn't make mistakes, right? 
Well, no. So then why are you figuring he's making a mistake right now? Like, why do, why do you think that that's okay? Or you're going to kind of do the mental gymnastics to make that work for you right now. He doesn't. He doesn't make mistakes. So we can think through and study how we view the messages that feed into our thoughts, how we are mothering our children, whether we are holding them tight or holding them out here as we have been called to do, and what God's promises are and how he fulfills them. That's why I wanted you to write down your prayers. Be intentional with, I like writing lists. I, I like it because then I can see it on my paper and like, oh, that really does matter. Um, in the heart, when I was saying about um, when I was in my major frustration, um, when the boys were young and, and working through those feelings, I actually, I'd gone and to speak to somebody and, and she said just about this, it was how I can move forward. And she said, okay, write everything down that you're upset about. Like it was so like, we'll just write it down. I'm like, well, I write things down all the time. What do you mean? Like, how? that's it? That's all you want me to do? She's like, yeah, write out. Take a piece of paper and go and write it out. So I did. Started writing down all the things that I thought I was upset about. And it was the last thing on the page that I was really, really struggling with. It took me the entire page and the back, actually, <laughs> um, to get to what the heart of the problem was. And it just, it proved to me the power of writing out, whether you're journaling um, writing out your prayers, and then seeing how God delivers on them. So I think that's all the time we have, ladies. I really didn't give you an opportunity um, if you have any questions. Um, but if you do have some questions, I encourage you either to come and find me. We, have, we do have a few minutes before um, we have to be back in main worship A, um, if you have any questions. But I just, I really, I love being a cheerleader for moms and um, I find a lot of joy in saying, okay, <laughs> we're in this together. Uh, so I encourage you to continue, maybe lean on a mom. Maybe, it's, maybe you think you're the one that needs the help, um, but it's actually helping others in the helping of others that you will be ministered to also. So in, um, just as we close, I'm going to pray. And then um, if you do have questions, I really didn't give you an opportunity to raise your hand, but um, you can come on up and we can chat. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this time together. I am just so thankful for this opportunity and this weekend of worship to come together as women. It's so, so important. I pray specifically this afternoon for the women in this room and the motherhood um, ministry that they have in front of them. They don't have to go to a distant country to be able to do missionary work for you, Lord. They're on mission right now in their living room, in their kitchen, in their homes for you, for your glory and our good. We love you, Lord, and we are so thankful. In Jesus' name, amen.